Hello Biotechnicians, this is Dr. Farhan Zameer from Biotechnica Bangalore. For a very long time, we had a request from students saying that, you know, sir, you, you create videos for all PhDs and postdocs. Can you create videos, small research works uh, dedicated to, you know, BSc students or MSc students who can actually perform their mini projects. So this entire video is dedicated to all my BSc students, BTEC students who can actually, uh, you know, execute research work for three to four months to get the flavor of research. But even though with this three to four months of research, there is a substantial good amount of data which could be generated wherein that would be sufficient for one publication. So the entire video now is captioned as mini projects proposal so that you can write your proposals for various kinds of, uh, you know, state government and, uh, you know, central government grants. Example for VGST, that is Vision Group of Science and Technology. You can, you know, pitch in your idea so that you can receive a small seed grant so that you can actually achieve your goal in terms of research. Now, how exactly this could be done and what are the various kinds of mini projects which could be designed at a college level we will try to look upon in detail, so let's dwell in. So welcome back. So as I have promised you, I am trying to give you eight ideas which have been already been executed so that you know that this is feasible as a mini project in your curriculum. So let's try to look into the first uh, uh, you know, concept. So this first concept uh, is it is from you know the wealth out of waste. So uh, a student over here, they were able to isolate uh, the waste spent, which has been generated uh, after, uh, you know, after various kinds of processing of funnel. And once there is a funnel spent, that is the nutraceutically industrial funnel spent, which was been just thrown out or which has been burned. What the students they did was they were able to collect this waste. And then they, they are now, they underst understood various kinds of phytochemical phenomena present in that particular waste spent. So now when they know that there is absolutely nothing which is of you know greater source so all the phytomolecules have been removed by the company and that been that has been utilized now they have the the the, the waste uh, spent. So out of this waste spent what the student uh, did was they they did a uh, uh, you know, a scanning electron microscopy. So when they did a microscopy on it, so they were able to see there were large spores, you know, the large space, you know, between, between the funnel spent. So there comes an idea saying that this could be utilized for capturing of certain toxic molecules, which are either in a industrial waste or in the water effluent. So uh, we thought that can we utilize the same technology for, you know, screening or for actually removing out uh, of a very important and dye which is used in molecular biology especially for staining of DNA and RNA and this dye is called as ethidium bromide. Now many a times you know um, knowingly or unknowingly researchers they put ethidium bromide into the sink and that is how it can go into the water bodies and that you know that it is a neurotoxic agent and it can lead into various kinds of carcinogenesis. So here what the student did was they took up the, the nutraceutical industrial spent that is for the, from the funnel spent and this was being utilized to capture uh, the ethidium bromide which was in water. So there was a bioremediation process which was being done and this was been done using a column. There was a bedding of the column with uh, the funnel spent and with this funnel spent ethidium bromide of various concentration was been packed and then we looked upon what was the holding capacity, the dye holding capacity of the funnel spent and trust me my dear friends what we looked upon was ex so much of you know uh, greater excitement because this uh, funnel spent was able to take up around 80 to 90 percent of ethidium bromide which otherwise will go into you know a sink or any kind of water bodies. So here uh, here comes an idea wherein we were able to look into the isothermal uh, you know conditions the kinetic conditions and also thermodynamic modeling was been done using this kind of a study. This is just between you know three to four months this kind of a study could be executed. 
Now, the second kind of a project is isolation of endophytic, you know, uh, microorganisms, especially the fungus from a plant. Okay, this could be of any plant, but this is a data from the pinus plant, which grows in the Western Ghats. Now, as you know, Western Ghats is a belt of biodiversity hotspot and um, especially, uh, you know, uh, there is a difference in the habit and the habitat in terms of temperature, in terms of soil fertility, in terms of pH of the soil, all these conditions vary. Now, there are special plants which is called as pinus plant which are like absolutely you would have seen it they are like needle kind structures but in this needle kind of structures they reside certain very important you know fungus which are of high metabolic value so these you know fungus they grow and once they are grown in the laboratory conditions they are able to produce certain secondary metabolites these secondary metabolites are of great importance especially in terms of its medicinal value uh, these metabolites could be used as anti-cancer agent or for any kind of other bioassays so you know this is a simple study wherein you can still you know isolate the plant isolate the endophytes from it then go for you know solvent separation upon solvent separation you can you know look for various kinds of bioactivity from the metabolite Again, you can you can finish this project between around you know three to four months, and this is another mini project. Uh, this is a great project, and which is a project of uh, a great relevance. Uh, so we everybody knows that uh, you know during COVID, all our testings were been done using RT PCR. So here, what is PCR? PCR refers to polymerase chain reaction. Now here comes a technology. Here comes a PCR wherein you are trying to amplify a product. Okay, I repeat, here comes a technology wherein you're trying to amplify a, a segment of DNA. Okay, but however, without using PCR machine, here's the catch. Okay, the, we are not using a PCR machine. So the net saving on the detection is around three to four lakh rupees, which is on the investment on the PCR. So this technique is called as LAMP technique, which refers to loop mediated isothermal amplification technique, which does not require PCR. So on the table, on plain table or on your bench, you are able to perform PCR. This was another work which was been done by a student called as Ashwini. Uh, wherein she was able to utilize the LAMP technology in detection of a pathogen, a human pathogen, which is called as Listeria. So Listeria monocytogens could be, you know, detected using LAMP technology and, uh, you know, it could be a milk, poultry, dairy, meat, any of these particular samples, uh, these samples could be tested so that, you know, the patient or the human does not get uh, affected with uh, listeriosis. So this is how uh, a rapid diagnostic technique could was also been developed within, you know, uh, four to six months. Now, this is another interesting project and this project is called as project 3G. Now, what is this GGG? So GGG refers to Go Green Ganesha. So as we know that India is full of festivals and here we celebrate a very important uh, festival which is called as the Ganesha festival or the Ganesha Chaturthi. So here, uh, you know, uh, the idols of uh, the God has been made and after the, the, the duration of worship at different, different durations, it might be uh, a single day, uh, three days, you know, five days, seven days, and then it can go until a month. So, you know, you uh, uh, the idol uh, has been actually been submerged into the water bodies. So what we did was we were able able to understand what exactly is the role of paints on uh, you know on on the idol so now because the moment the idol has been submerged into the water the pain gets dissipated into the water bodies and here what exactly is the effect on the the flora and fauna of the entire you know water body and uh, this was been studied uh, in this particular project and uh, finally you know we were able to and uh, trust me my dear friend this was a 10 year long project which started from 2012 to 2022 uh, but what we are trying to you know tell you is uh, you, you know, all there are many students who who came together for a you know duration of three months to six months, so that they were able to understand the the testing of water quality, okay, testing of various kinds of uh, you know understanding alga, cyanobacteria. This was done in collaboration with uh, Karnataka Pollution Control Board. So all of these people they came together, and this is how uh, the led into the success of the project 3G. So this is again uh, a big project, but however, it was been done with uh, you know uh, the intention of 333 months from various students. Now, uh, for this, again, uh, this is again a very interesting project, but however, for this, you require venom. 
Now, anybody who has an access for snake venom and if they are having a licensed proprietary of venom, okay, they can actually execute this particular work. So, what we did was uh, we took up venom and then we looked for various kinds of anti venom or antidote uh, component, especially from the phytomolecules. So, we were able to take up Mangifera indica, that is mango bark, and from the mar mango bark, the um, um, molecule called as Mangiferin was been isolated, and this isolated molecule was able to neutralize the venom of Russell Swiper. Now again this is a project of around six months but however now extrapolating the data a very important uh, research has been done on uh, you know the non-venom wiper uh, family. So here these uh, you know the the, when there is a snake bite, rather than the bite itself, there is a secondary infection. Now, this secondary infection has been because of the harboring of more amount of microorganisms from the oral cavity of the snake or onto the skin, from the skin of the snake onto the, the, the human infected site. So, here there comes a secondary infection. So, many of the people rather than dying because of the snake bite per se, they die because of you know, secondary infections. So, here we wanted to understand the oral microbiota of the non-venom uh, you know, wiper and the wound uh, infections which have been caused because of this particular venom. Again, now depending upon your availability of time and feasibility of time, you can still perform it on one biomarker or you can take more biomarkers so that you can understand the mode of action, the mechanism of you know the, the wound and also you can work upon an anti-wound uh, you know, uh, or wound healing ability of, of uh, various kinds of infection, especially from snake venom. Now, this was another work which was been done uh, in collaboration with uh, you know SJC College Mysore. So here, uh, uh, as we know that neem plant is called as you know the God's tree. So, but however, onto this God's tree, there are certain infection which can happen because of uh, a, a fungus which is called as pomopsis. Now, this pomopsis. Uh, can cause a disease which is called a dieback disease of neem. Now, once you have this dieback disease of the neem, the God's tree after some point of time, it will, you know, it will just uh, die uh, because of this infection. So, what we tried to do is we were able to identify what exactly is the, uh, the sequence of uh, the pomopsis which is crucial for the survival of the uh, of the fungus and also how can we actually target this uh, you know the gene so that the, the the fungus does not grow and that is how we can rescue the neem plant so you know this was a first time study wherein we were able to isolate the entire uh, you know gene and this has been actually deposited in genbank uh, this was uh, work by another student uh, who actually executed the entire work and finally this was converted into a phd work now, everybody knows about uh, trisomy 21, which is commonly called a Down syndrome. So here using, you know, uh, uh, in silico tools such as, uh, you know, drug design pipeline, uh, all these components are docking, molecular docking. So all these kind of uh, components could be uh, an important key tool which can actually reduce the instance of you know trisomy 21 that is down syndrome because the quality of life actually deteriorates once the 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 family has a you know, down syndrome child and hence how do we rectify it because of the technology which is promoting us to edit uh, the the errors using CRISPR technology, we can still work upon a very very important biomarker which is called as cystothionin beta synthase. Okay, so this is a very important biomarker which can the overexpression of this particular protein can lead into trisomy 21. So what one of the student did was uh, she was able to look upon what is the effect of the galacto you know uh, catacol. Okay, so the uh, uh, you know different uh, derivatives of catechol was been actually taken up, and then how exactly this interacts with uh, C beta S. Uh, this was been actually looked upon and there were beautiful results which were been actually elucidated with another three to six months of studies. So here at Biotechnica, we also, you know, offer internships. We also offer, you know, project work uh, wherein uh, you, either it could be a wet lab or it could be dry lab. We are here to help you out so that you get the glimpse of how exactly our research has been done of our international quality. Now, apart from that, this is also a revenue yielder 
for uh, for students who who understand biochemistry or who understand life sciences in a much better way so most of the companies they are looking for certain pathways so they are looking for certain targets so so how to design a target how exactly is your understanding about a target and if you are able to design pathways so in your internship between 3 to 6 months you can you can dedicate your entire time on to your computer using bioinformatics so that you can actually design certain pathways you can design certain novel pathways so that certain companies can actually uh, take or you know uh, take the royalty you can take the royalty and the company can purchase your particular pathway and then look for new newer targets so there are various opportunities which could be explored either from a bsc student point of view or an msc point uh, student point of view or a btech or uh, an mtech student so that you can dwell more upon so that you can design when you are especially in your bachelor's or in your masters you can design your hypothesis you can design a platform so that upon that you can build for your phd or your postdoc so at biotechnica what we are trying to do is we are trying to have a special you know focus on transforming your ideas to innovation and that is how we are trying to empower your research so at, if you have any queries for internships or certification or you know pursuing your project work we are open to all kind of proposals and we are able to accommodate you so that we can work together so that the science could be empowered so with this if you have any queries please do write to us at support at biotechnica.org and we will make sure that we will have a, a complete association for 24 into 7 so that we can uh, empower your research and we can work together until then take care goodbye